In this video, we will discuss the auto type specifier. So let us try to understand what is this auto type specifier and what it is used for. So it is common for us to want to store the value of an expression in a variable. So there are times when we are evaluating an expression and then the outcome or the value of that expression, we might want to store it into a variable. So it's a very common use case. Now to declare such a variable, we need to know the type of the expression. So since we are trying to store the result of that expression into a variable, we need to know the type of the expression so that we can declare the type of that result also to be of the same type. Now sometimes it may be difficult to determine the type of an expression. So there may be times when it is not possible or it may be difficult to determine what type of an expression it is. And hence it will be difficult for us to declare a result variable in order to store the value of that expression as well. So in such cases, we can let the compiler figure out the type for us by using the auto type specifier. So this auto type specifier helps us by letting the compiler itself figure out what type it is by evaluating the expression. Now this is a feature that has been introduced since the C++ 11 standard. So in older standards prior to C++ 11, we may not have this feature. So in the newer or the modern ones since C++ 11, this is available. Okay, so let's take examples to understand how this works. So here we have two variables val1 and val2 which are of some type. We don't know what type let's say. And then we want to say store the result of val1 plus val2 into this variable called sum. Okay, and since we don't know what is the type of val1 and val2, we are going to make use of the auto keyword. So this auto type specifier will evaluate val1 and val2 and based on the result, it will try to deduce what type it is and that type will be assigned to the variable sum. So the compiler will deduce a type of sum from the type returned by applying plus to val1 and val2. So after applying this plus operator to val1 and val2, whatever result we get, the type of that result will be deduced and that type will be assigned to sum with the help of this auto type specifier. So for example, if val1 and val2 are of integer type, then sum will also be an integer. And if val1 and val2 are double, then the sum will also be a double type and so on. So whatever type it is, it will deduce, it will find out and it will assign it to sum. Okay, so let's go to Visual Studio Code and take some examples to understand it further. So here I am on my Visual Studio Code and I have a program called auto1.cpp and here as you can see inside this program, I have an integer a equal to 10 and then b equal to 20. So these two variables a and b are integers and then I am declaring a variable called sum where I want to store the result of a plus b and then I am using it with the auto keyword. So in cases like this, in simple programs like this, we already know what type it is but there may be some bigger or complicated programs when we don't know what is going to be the type of an expression's value. So in those cases, this will be more useful, but this is just for example purpose. So here we are telling the compiler that whatever you get when you add a plus b, whatever type that is, assign the same type to the variable sum. Okay, and then I'm saying sum equal to sum, we're just printing it out. And then here, I just want to make sure or I just want to find out what is the type of sum. That means I want to find the type of this variable. And for this, I'm using this function type id and then within braces, we write sum dot name. So this is kind of a function to find out the type of a particular variable in C++. And when you are making use of this, you also need to include the header called type info, which I have done here. And similarly, here I am declaring two variables C and D of the type double with the values 1.2 and 2.3 respectively. And then again, we are adding them C plus D and storing the result to sum underscore D. And then we are again telling the compiler, whatever is the result that you're getting here, deduce what type it is and assign that same type to sum. That's why we are using the auto keyword. And again, I'm printing out the next sum over here and I am printing out what type of variable is this sum underscore D. Okay, let me run this program. All right, so I type G++ auto1.cpp and I hit enter. Okay, the program is compiled without any errors. Let's run the output file a.exe. And as you can see, the first sum here, 10 plus 20, it is equal to 30. And then when I printed the type of this sum, it printed I. 
Now i actually means it is an integer. Next one, the sum is equal to 1.2 plus 2.3 which is 3.5 and when I printed the type of sum, it says d which means double. So as you can see, we declared c and d as double and because of that, the result is also of a double type. Right? So that is how the auto type specifier works. Now, as we talk about auto type specifier, as a declaration can involve only a single base type, the initializers for all the variables in the declaration must have types that are consistent with each other. So, we know that when we are declaring variables, we can have a base type and then we can have certain declarators. For example, I can say int a equal to 1, comma, b equal to 2, comma, c equal to 3. So, we can have a single base type and the initializers for all the variables in the declaration must have the same type that are consistent with each other. So, I cannot say that int a equal to 1, comma, b equal to 2.5. Now, I cannot say 2.5 because b is an integer and I cannot assign a float or a double type to it. So, the same goes with the auto type specifier as well. So, let's take an example. So, here I am saying auto i equal to 0 and asterisk p equal to ampersand i. Now, what does this mean? Here, I am saying i equal to 0 and if I say auto here, what the compiler will do is, it will see what is the value that is assigned to i and based on that, it will deduce the type of i. So, here i equal to 0. So, it is an integer. So, the compiler will assign integer type to this i and here star p equal to ampersand i. p is a pointer to an integer. So, p is a pointer and what is it pointing to? It is pointing to i which is also an integer. So, we can see that both i and this pointer p are integer types. Okay, and then this auto will assign integer for both of them and this is a perfectly fine declaration. Now, next, here I am saying auto sz equal to 0 and pi equal to 3.14. Now, is this correct? Let's take a closer look. Again, here we are using the auto keyword. So, the compiler has to deduce and find out what is the type and it has to assign it to the variables. So, here sz equal to 0. So, sz is an integer. So, compiler will say that this sz will have type integer. Now, the same integer has to be applied to pi as well because we are declaring all this in a single line here. But pi is having the value 3.14 which is a double or a float type. So, this is actually an error. It is an inconsistent type. sz and pi are not of the same type and hence we are not able to make such a declaration over here. So, we have to make sure that the initializers for all the variables in the declaration must have types that are consistent with each other. So, this is one thing that we have to keep in mind while making use of the auto type specifier. Alright, so that was about auto type specifier and I hope you understood what they are used for and how they can be used. So, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.